I'll praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down and towards the holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. <coughs> the God is in prayer. Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come to thy presence, Lord, this blessed Sunday morning. Thank you and praising the Lord for this morning and thank you and praising the Lord for all your blessings in our life. And Father, we pray that you will give us a heart to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father Lord, for those who are still coming, we pray that your grace may be sufficient for them to come and enjoy your presence, Lord, and participate, Lord, in the blessings that you want to give us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right, let's turn in our song books at this time to song number 13, 1, 3. Psalm 13, we we'll rise to our feet and join in this beautiful hymn of praise. O Lord my God and I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. And take me home 
what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble adoration, and they proclaim, my God, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Saviour God to How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Saviour God to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Or am I standing in turn on the Bibles at this time? To Psalms 23. In the Bible, Psalms 23, and we're going to read it uh, responsibly. I'll read one part of the verse and you can respond with the next. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie, lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your Lord and your staff may comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father. Thanksgiving, and also prayer of confession. Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank and praise the Lord for this morning and all the blessings that you've given us this morning, O Lord. And Father Lord, we want to thank you, Master, for all the physical blessings you've given us, food, shelter, clothing, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us families, O Master. Pouring your love into our families. Thank you for the children we have got, O Master. The joy that our children give us. Thank you, Lord, for the grandchildren you have given us, O Lord. The joy they give each one of us, Master. Thank you and praise the Lord for your mighty blessings that you have given us in our life. And especially, Lord, we want to thank you for your <coughs> spiritual blessings. Well, Master, even as Paul enumerates them in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, you have... Uh, called us a lot to be your children, O Master, by washing away all our sins. You have redeemed us from the power of sin, O God. Sin has no power over us. And all this you have done through grace, for we know, Lord, and you knew, Master, right from the, before the creation of the world, before the foundation of the world, that uh, given the choice, O Master, given the will of God, we would tend to go towards evil. We tend to do evil. Our uh, thought, O Lord, are all inclined towards evil. Even as Paul says, I know what is good, I want to do it, and yet I cannot. I end up in doing evil. Yes, Master Lord, that is our state, and it is from there that you lifted us up, Lord, from the miry clay and placed our feet on the rock to stay, and the rock that is Jesus Christ. Yes, Master Lord, uh, it is through our Lord Jesus Christ, what he has done for us on the cross, that we have got grace for his blood was shed, Master. For us, his body was broken for us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's what your word tells us. 
and uh, the eternal one, the one who was always there with you, he became man, O Lord, uh, fully man, fully God. And because he was fully God, Master, we know that uh, he could uh, uh, sacrifice himself for the sins of the whole world. It was an eternal sacrifice because he was an eternal being. Yes, Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ was required to be fully God, fully man, to stand in between the gap between uh, the Lord and us, representing God and representing us also. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your great sacrifice. And thank you, Holy Spirit God, for working in us and appropriating all that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in our lives. Making that objective uh, uh, reality that happened 2,000 years ago, a subjective experience for each one of us. Thank you, Lord. And Father Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins, everything that we have committed against you in thought, word, and deed. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, God, uh, in which we tend to live at times, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will take these away, that we may walk on the narrow path that you have given us uh, to get hold of that to master for which our Lord has taken hold of us eternal life. The eternal life has already been won for us in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has risen once again with a new body and that is a new body that he is going to give us. Thank you Lord for this. And keeping that as a focus, help us to go ahead Master, not getting uh, involved Master Lord in the uh, evil of this world, but rather uh, living a life of holiness. Uh, for you have constantly said, be holy for I am holy. And go ahead, O Master Lord, to glorify thy name. Father Lord, uh, the uh, things that are in our nature, Lord, which tend to uh, make us go away from you, Lord, we pray that you will take all those away and confirm us, O Master, into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Towards this end, we just commit ourselves, Master, in thy almighty arms. We ask this in the most precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we are going to read from the Word of God at this time. Uh, there are two readings that we have. The first is uh, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 6. 1 Samuel chapter 6 and verses 1 to 13. 1 Samuel chapter 6 and verses 1 to 13. Uh, and Mona will read these verses for us. And then we'll have Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 8 to 14. And I'm going to request Priyam to lead us in this reading. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. The first is 1 Samuel chapter 6. Verses 1 to 13. The first reading is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. <clears throat> the ark returned to Israel. When the ark of the Lord had been in Philistine territory seven months, the Philistine called for the priest and the diviners and said, What shall we do with, with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it back to its place. They answered, If you return the ark of God of Israel, do not send it away empty, but by all means send a guilt offering to him. Then you will be healed and you will know why his hand has not been lifted from you. The Philistine asked, What guilt offering should we send to him? They replied, Five gold tumors and five gold rats, according to the number of the Philistine rulers, because the same plague has struck both you and your rulers. Make models of the tumors and of the rats that are destroying the country and pay honor to Israel's God. Perhaps he will lift his hand from you and your gods and your land. Why do you harden your hearts as Egyptians and Pharaoh did? When he treated them harshly, they did not send the Israelites out so they could go on their way. Now then, get a new cart ready with two cows that have calved and have been never been yoked. Hitch the cows to the cart, but take the calves away and pen them up. Take the ark of the law and put it on the cart and in the chest. Beside it, put the gold objects you are sending back to him as a guilt offering. Send it on its way, but keep watching it. If it goes up to its own territory, toward Beth Shemesh, then the Lord has brought this great disaster on us. But if it does not, then we will know that it was not his hand that struck us and that it had happened to us by chance. So they did this. They took two such calves and hitched them to the cart and penned up the, their calves. 
They placed the ark of the Lord on the cart, and along with it the chest containing the gold rats and the models of the tumors. Then the cows was, went straight up toward Bet Shemesh, keeping on the road and lowing all the way. They did not turn to the right or to the left. The rulers of the Philistine followed them as far as the border of Bet Shemesh. Now the people of Bet Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley, and when they looked up and saw the ark, they rejoiced at the sight. This is the word of God. Next reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 to 14. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of God. Right, this is the time that we are going to sing one hymn at this time. In number 378. In number 378, we'll remain seated even as we sing this hymn, and we'll bring our offerings unto the Lord at this time. 378. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 378, we'll remain seated and we'll bring our offerings to the Lord. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other water. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the that makes me white as snow, no other font I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can force in a joke, nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other font I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Say, all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other for I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let's all rise to our feet and join in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures. 
Praise the Lord for all good blessings that have given us in our life. Little that we have brought to you, Master Lord, from that we pray that you may bless it, O Lord, and use it for the extension of your kingdom. Even as we turn to your word, we pray that your word may come alive to us and may grow in your word, O Master. Father Lord, we commit ourselves in thy hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. All right, we are going to read from the gospel. Gospel according to St. John. So, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 9, and verses 1 to 41. John, chapter 9, and it reads uh, As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. For But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud, with the saliva and put it in the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. The word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't the same man who used to sit and beg? So some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then are your eyes open? They demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. <clears throat> Finally they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? Uh, it was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you said you say was born blind? How is it that now you can see? We know that he is our son, the parents answered, and we know that he was born blind. But how we can uh, see now or what or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age and he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, 
he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth, how dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out and when he, when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into the world uh, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him and heard him say, say this uh, and asked, What, are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim, you see, your guilt <coughs> remains. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy word. <clears throat> Very warm welcome, our dear friends, to this worship service, and uh, uh, I welcome all of you in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We've got uh, probably one person with us who is new today. You come for the first time. Okay. Can you just introduce yourself? Yeah. Praise Lord, everyone. Yeah, I'm from. Uh, I'm li- I live in Navrampura, and I'm studying in St. Xavier's College, and it's my second year, and myself. My name is Carl. Your name is? Carl. Carl, all right. Okay. Warm welcome to you. Please be seated. Please be seated. All right. Uh, next Sunday, of course, we'll be having the service. I may not be there, but uh, nevertheless, the service will uh, go on. Right. Uh, Akanksha Robert celebrates her birthday today. That is 19th of the month. And we'd like to especially pray for her and commit her in the Lord's hand. Let's bow down in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, Master Lord, for... Uh, Akanksha God and for uh, leading her till this moment to Master even as she celebrates her birthday today. Ask your blessings upon her. Pray, O Lord, that you will take her forward, O Lord, in your grace, in your plan, in your purpose and do your will in her life. Father Lord, we commit her and all that she uh, has in front of her, all that she is doing, O Master, into thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> All right, today's uh, sermon is entitled, uh, or titled, I would say, Live as Children of Light. Live as Children of Light. And that is what we read in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 to 14. Right? And especially, you see Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. We are told there, for once you, for you were once darkness, All right? but now you are light in the, in the Lord. Live as children of light. Once you were darkness... Uh, there was, it doesn't say that there was darkness in you, but you were the epitome of darkness. Everything you was dark. And then he goes on to say, but now you are light. You are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. So here we are told, my dear friends, that we were once darkness, but uh, because we lived in uh, the world of darkness and we were involved in the works of darkness, if you see Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 1 to 3, Paul tells us that we were dead in our trespasses. Ephesians 2 verse 1. We were dead in our trespasses and we were the children of wrath of God. That is the wrath of God rested in us because we were the followers of the unholy trinity. The holy trinity is called the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. The unholy trinity is Satan, the world and our evil nature. And we are followers of all these things. Satan has taken over the systems of the world. And uh, our evil nature is prone to the evil in this world. And hence we lived in darkness. And thus we became darkness ourselves. We not only lived in darkness, but we were darkness ourselves. But now Paul says that we are light. in the. Uh, we are now light in the world. And hence we should live as children of light. God has done something in us, he says. Or God has done something in you by which you have become light and so you need to live as children of light. What turned us from darkness to light? It's basically uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does it mean to live as children of light? And we are going to look at this especially from John chapter 9 where uh, this man who was born blind, he is not only given physical eyes, uh, but he's also given spiritual eyes. You know, he's made alive uh, physically by giving eyes to him, but he's also made alive uh, spiritually. You know, his light, his 
uh, life which was dark physically that also gets light but his life that was dark uh, spiritually that also Jesus Christ uh, heals and brings light into his life. There are two places in the New Testament where Jesus Christ especially speaks about uh, being light. One is in John chapter 8 and verse 12 where he says, I am the light of the world. Right? And anyone who follows me will not work, walk in darkness but uh, will have the light of life in him. That's one. And secondly, of course, in this very chapter, in verse 5, Jesus Christ said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And if you study both these statements in its context, you would know the first one emphasizes Jesus being the light, while the second one emphasizes the fact that Jesus came to spread the light. Jesus came to spread the light. So if you take both these uh, statements together, it simply means, my dear friends, that Jesus himself was the light. And why did he come into this world? He came to spread that light. Right? These are two things that we should keep in mind. Keeping this in mind, let's go ahead to see this particular uh, uh, chapter where this, there is this man who has been born blind and he is uh, begging. That's, what, that's the work that he's doing. And uh, Jesus affirms a very, very important thing to his disciples because his disciples ask him, that, uh, who sinned? Is it this man? Or was it his parents because of which he was born blind? And this is very important for us here in India, where uh, people believe in the theory of karma. And if a person is born blind, if a person is born uh, sick, if a person is born poor, whom do they blame it on? Their previous life. This is what they have done in their previous life and they are paying for that in this life. But Jesus Christ affirms that is not true. And he just says, it is neither he sent nor his uh, parents. It was basically uh, God wanted to glorify his name through him. And that is why he has, uh, he has done what he has done. And then, of course, uh, we know that uh, uh, Jesus uh, calls him and he uh, puts uh, some spit in the mud there, puts it on his eyes and tells him to go and wash himself in the pool of Siloam. Important thing for us to know is that, or to see is that this man did what Jesus Christ told him to do. Right? He went to the pool of Siloam, he washed himself, uh, washed his uh, face, his eyes, and he came back seeing. Uh, very clearly, what healed this man? It was the faith of uh, uh, this man that healed him. You know, we don't see him coming to Jesus Christ in faith. Right? It's Jesus Christ who went to him. Okay, the, if you see the lepers and others, they came to him in faith, knowing that he could heal. Here, Jesus Christ goes to him, he uh, heals him, uh, or he puts mud on his eyes. He doesn't heal him instantly. He puts mud on his eyes. And this man had to have faith to go and, uh, uh, and wash himself, just like Naaman. Naaman had to have faith that uh, when the prophet told him to go and dip himself seven times, he had to do it. Similarly, this man also had had to have faith. And then he has a series of confrontation. He has a confrontation with his uh, neighbors, he has confrontation with the Pharisees, and so on and so forth. And all the time he is repeating the same thing. He is repeating his, uh, the experience that he has got. He doesn't dilute that experience. You know, people try to dilute that experience. Who was this person who, oh, who healed you? He couldn't have been a uh, uh, a righteous person. He, yeah, because of what he has done, he was an alhoni person, ungodly person. They try to, you know, uh, denounce his testimony, put down his testimony. And yet we see that in all these confrontations, this man, he kept to his testimony. Who healed you? He says, this man, he told me, this man called Jesus, he told me to go and wash myself in the pool of Siloam. I did it and I was healed. It is only after all these confrontation and the fact that this man stuck to his testimony, stuck to what God had done for him. He did not rationalize it. He did not do anything which was uh, against God, but rather he just stuck to his testimony. And uh, after all this, what happened? Jesus once again met him. Right in verse uh, 38 following. And, uh, and at that time, what did Jesus say? He says, do you believe 
in the Son of Man. Right? This is the second confrontation that Jesus has with uh, this man. He says, do you believe in the Son of Man? And this man, you know, he immediately came to know that uh, uh, when this person is talking about the Son of Man, you know, he's talking of God himself. Because as I had explained even last time, the whole concept of the Son of Man, you know, it has come from Daniel chapter 7. And there the Son of Man was one who comes into the presence of the Almighty God, uh, presence of the ancient days, and he is given power and, uh, uh, and authority over all nations, and all the nations worship him. Right? So it shows that he was God. And when Jesus uses that statement or that title, do you know the Son of Man? This man uh, certainly knew that this person, Jesus, was speaking about God himself. And he says, yes, I do want to know who the Son of Man is. You know, in that very statement, he, he kind of realized, at least to some extent, that uh, uh, if I'm able to speak to the Son of Man, I'm going to relate to my Creator. I'm going to relate to God Himself. And when this man shows that desire to know God, you see, when he says, yes, show me who He is and I'll believe, he shows, he, he shows that he has the desire to know God. And when he shows the desire, what does Jesus Christ do? He says, the one who is speaking to you, he is the son of man. He reveals himself to be God himself. Now what does this man do? He says, he believed and he worshipped him. He worshipped him. Very few times in uh, the New Testament, in the earthly uh, I would say, ministry of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is actually worshipped. This is one of those places. You know, one of the other places uh, in the boat, when Peter realized who Jesus is, you know, it says he bowed down and worshipped him. This is another place where it says that he worshipped him. Well, uh, why did Jesus Christ come into this world? What was the reason for Jesus Christ coming into this world? He came to this world, my dear friends, to show who he was. So that those who believed on him, you know, they could, uh, they could get related to, uh, to God. And by getting related to God, they could get eternal life. He came to this world to give us eternal life. And how does one get eternal life? By recognizing, realizing, recognizing who Jesus is. Look at the two confrontations that we spoke of in the last two Sundays. You know, Nicodemus, that was in John chapter 3. And then John chapter 4, we spoke about the Samaritan woman. In both these uh, confrontations, what was Jesus Christ trying to do? Hmm? Uh, in uh, in uh, John chapter 3, he says, uh, how will you believe, you know, if I tell you earthly things? You know, and you don't believe it. How will you believe it if I tell you heavenly things? And then he goes on to say, who has gone to heaven but he who has come from heaven? Okay? Thereby signifying that I am the one who has come from heaven. He was showing to Nicodemus who he was. And it is there that Nicodemus believed. Even the uh, Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman, after all the conversation that he uh, had, you know, what does he do? He reveals himself. You know, when the woman says that the Messiah is going to come and he's going to show us all things, what does uh, Jesus Christ do? What does he say? I who sp uh, speak to you am he. He reveals her, himself as the Messiah. He reveals himself as the Christ. He reveals himself as God himself. You know, it is through that relationship that he built with Nicodemus, the relationship that he built with uh, uh, with uh, the Samaritan woman revealing himself and they believed upon him just like this man and this blind man they, he also believed in Jesus Christ and by believing in Jesus Christ he got, he got eternal life I just want you to turn to two verses John chapter 3 and verse 36 John chapter 3 and verse 36 And some, can someone read it? Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, 
Okay, whoever believes in the Son, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Alright? Uh, very clear. If you believe who Jesus Christ is, you know, uh, uh, it says that he is the one who gets life. Okay? I want you to read one more verse, John chapter 17 and verse uh, 3. John chapter 17 and verse 3. Okay, John 17 verse 3. What does it say? What is eternal life? Or how does get one eternal how does one get eternal life? It is through knowing who Jesus is, recognizing who Jesus is, accepting who Jesus is. The whole gospel of John, after writing everything in John chapter 20 and verse 31, John writes the reason he is writing the gospel. He says, I have written all these things. Only to convince you of who Jesus is, the Son of God. So that, believing on Him, you may get eternal life. Recognizing who Jesus is, realizing who Jesus is, recognizing who Jesus is, accepting who Jesus is, that itself gives eternal life. And that is what Nicodemus did, that is what uh, the Samaritan woman did, and this, that is what this blind man who had got uh, eyes, he did. So Jesus gave him a physical eyes, the physical darkness that was in him, he was not able to see, his uh, life was full of darkness, that went away, because that was, but that was only the first part. It was only after a long series of confrontations that he had, he came to this point that Jesus gave him spiritual light in his life. The, the spiritual darkness that was there, that my dear friends went away. There were other people in this story who could have got eternal life. Lots of other people in the story who could have got eternal life. And yet, they missed the bus. They missed the chance. First of all, look at the neighbors. When the neighbors saw him, the neighbors saw that he was, he had, uh, uh, he was not blind. Some said, no, he is not the same man. He looks like him, but he's not the same man. This man said, no, I am the same man. Okay? And so they asked him, how, how come you've got uh, eyes? How come you're seeing? Because from birth, we know or we have seen that you're blind. We know that you uh, beg for your living. And he said, this man called Jesus, he is the one who has given, us, uh, given me uh, uh, eyes. And uh, what should they have done when they came to know this? What should they have done? They should have believed and they should have gone to look for Jesus Christ. Right? They should have gone to look for Jesus Christ. And yet, what did they do? They took this man and went to the Pharisees. They went to the Pharisees. You know, saying that, see, this man is telling us something. You know, you give us, uh, uh, you tell us whether it is correct or wrong. They were not able to believe that a man who is born blind can ever see, see, get eyes. They were not able to believe that uh, uh, anyone can give eyes or anyone can give sight. Why? Because of two things. Number one is skepticism and number two is rationalization. When we are, when we are skeptics, how can this be done? It's not possible. Skeptics. And number two, we tend to rationalize everything. When we tend to rationalize everything, everything, you know, we want everything to be logical. Nothing beyond our logic, you know, uh, is true. That's what these people were like. And that is why they were not able to accept Jesus Christ in their life. That's the first group. And if you are of that kind, where we look for rationalization in everything, even the word of God, you know, the people who read the Word of God, they say, I believe everything that is in the Word of God, but uh, certain things I will take out. You know, I, I'll take out the, uh, the virgin birth, but not possible. I'll take that out. Some of the miracles that are there, not possible. I'll take that out. 
you know everything else that jesus did his teachings are there uh, other things i believe i don't believe in his resurrection you know these are things which are not possible a rationalization when you rationalize you become a skeptic and when you become when you rationalize and become a skeptic it's impossible for you to believe in jesus christ if you want a reason for everything it's not possible to believe in jesus christ there's a lot of logic there in the bible you see uh, there is a continuation in the bible the uh, jesus christ is revealed or jesus christ is concealed in the old testament right from genesis chapter chapter 1 i would say he is concealed in the old testament he is revealed in the new testament right so there's a lot of logic there but ultimately we require a little faith to believe who jesus is and if you don't have even that little faith my dear friends it's not possible for us to believe in jesus christ that's the first thing look at the second group of people that's the pharisees what are they interested in what is their interest their interest my dear friends is when did this person do it to you okay they are not interested in uh, who is that person when did he do it to you why if he has done it on sabbath what did he do he says he took mud and he put uh, his spit on it took that put it on my eyes so that's not that's not allowed on sabbath that was the rules they had made traditions they had made and uh, because of that they said that uh, this man is a sinner and it's impossible that uh, he can be the messiah what kept them from recognizing who jesus is it is their uh, i would say it is their own traditions they had they had uh, gone beyond what the bible says and uh, when we tend to keep ourselves only in our traditions You see, all the churches have the traditions, right? And when we tend to keep ourselves on the traditions, my dear friends, many a times we tend to miss who Jesus really is. You know, the Pentecostals will say, "Unless you do this, 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 you are not a Christian." We will probably say, "Unless you do this, 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 you are not a Christian." But uh, we tend to forget that all these things are not not essential for our belief in Jesus Christ, for our faith in Jesus Christ. Right? So we need to keep. everything aside and just look at the word of god if you want to believe in jesus christ okay the third group is uh, are the parents and what do the parents say the parents they are called by the pharisees and they say is this your son is this your son is yes, yes they are, he is our son and was he born blind yes uh, but uh, as how he got his eyes and everything we really don't know okay you can ask him he is of age he lands see and why did they say this because it uh, we are told here that they were afraid of the pharisees because the pharisees have already said anyone who uh, believes that jesus is the messiah because the jews were waiting for the messiah anyone who believes that jesus is the messiah he is going to be he, he is going to be excommunicated so they were there was a fear in them and the fear of the society that kept them from believing who jesus is and many a times this happens to us we as christians my dear friends we may we are born christians second generation third generation christians but uh, unless that there, there is that uh, uh, that you know that desire to show ourselves as christians show ourselves as or do what the word of god tells us to do you know we really cannot get the get the power of blessing that god wants to give us fear of the society if the fear of the society is there in us we can never realize we may realize who jesus is but we can never realize the power that jesus wants to give us there's one last group here which is not given in this particular uh, chapter but what we read from first samuel chapter 6 uh, and there if you see chapter 5 the philistines have captured the ark of the covenant you know the ark of the covenant was a box so they have captured that they took it in the temple they put it there and uh, that night the statue of their god dagon that fell down again they put it up the next night again it fell down the arms were broken you know it kept on happening and they kept on taking the ark from city to city from one place to another thinking that uh, 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 you know things will go right with us 
and yet it did not go right with them. There was a, a bubonic plague that uh, took place, the, the plague of rats that took place. You know, and then they realized that this is because you have kept the Ark of the Covenant here. And if you read that chapter, it's very interesting, I don't have time, so I won't uh, read it for you all. But if you read that, it says, uh, their own religious people, they told them, they told them, this is the God who released uh, these people from Egypt by his miraculous hand. Have you not heard? Have you not heard the miraculous work that he did? And so now, if you want to be saved, you know, this is all that you've got to do. You've got to make some... Uh, tumors of gold and so on and so forth and send it on a cart, etc. Don't you think God was giving them a chance to relate to him? See, they had a particular worldview. It was a pluralistic worldview. Right? Now God had broken into that worldview. He had shown them through experience, through circumstances, that what you believe is not correct. That he had shown them that very, very clearly. But instead of believing that, now what are they doing? They are saying, let us put this on cart, you know, a fresh cart and send it off. Instead of believing, my dear friends, that the God of the Bible, the God who is doing all these things is the only God, they are still stuck, my dear friends, to their pluralistic idea of God. Alright, so... Uh, one more chance. They had a chance. They had a chance to believe in uh, the God of the Bible and they lost that chance. See, God keeps confronting uh, every human being. Every person he keeps confronting in different ways. You know, he uh, confronted uh, the blind man who got his eyes. He confronted the, uh, the neighbors. He confronted the uh, Pharisees, he confronted uh, uh, the parents, every one of them were, were confronted by God in, in their own way, in a way that they could understand. So were the, people, the Philistines. And yet we see that none of them really believed, none of them really believed. God has confronted you, my dear friends, in uh, different ways. And if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, you know, then uh, there has to be a difference in your life. There has to be a difference. And what difference? Uh, as uh, Paul tells us in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 uh, and verse 8, you've got to live as children of light. You've got to live as children of light. And what does it mean to live as children of light? If you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life. It's just not, uh, it's just not a faith, my dear friends. It's the way of living that will determine whether you have really done it or not. And I'm going to speak of just two or three things and then end. First of all, we should know that we are not walking in darkness. Okay? What does it mean to not walk in darkness? We know where we are going. That means we know the road we are taking and we know our destination. You ask people of any other faith, right? Do you know what, what is going to really happen to you? After this death, none of them will give a firm answer. But Jesus Christ, who was the light of this world, who revealed to us very, very clearly, uh, you know, uh, the road that we are going on and the, our ultimate destination. Alright, so uh, <clears throat> that's the first and foremost thing. Right? Along with that, God has revealed in Jesus Christ who He is. And so, if He has revealed who He is, my dear friends, uh, it is for us to imitate uh, you know, Him as such. And what is the what is the basic characteristic of God that he is uh, characteristic that God has revealed about himself? I would say two things. Number one is the fact that he is love. Right? What kind of love has uh, God shown to us? It is unconditional love. It is agape love. All right? And the second is holiness. These are two things he has revealed to us. You know? And if you want to remain, live as a children of light, 
then certainly these are the two things that should be that should characterize our life unconditional love and holiness if you really want to live as the children of light okay uh, just look at uh, a few verses ephesians chapter 5 and verse uh, 3 what does it say ephesians chapter 5 and verse 3 anyone who finds it can just read they must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed okay all right so basically what is he talking about there he saying deeds of darkness are deeds of unholiness okay one is of course uh, the life of love the second is the life of holiness and there are number of verses you know we can see you can look at uh, ephesians you can look at colossians you can look at galatians on all, all of them the pattern of uh, writing the letter is the same number one he gives the theological uh, aspect of what jesus did and then he gives the the practical aspect of how it should affect our life all right so uh, that's the second aspect living Uh, lives of holiness or having nothing to do with deeds of darkness okay uh, the third thing i would say is that if we are if god has given us light in our life then we need to be reflectors of that light okay and how can we be reflectors of of the of light by l- not only living a life which pleases god but also uh, telling others my dear friends uh, who jesus is it is through that that we become reflectors of light okay so keep this in mind that uh, if we really claim you see it's one thing to claim it's another thing to live especially for uh, us who are uh, second generation third generation christians all of us are anyone who's who are new christians in this right we are all maybe i am i am a third generation christian okay so we tend to we tend to take christianity very lightly all right we tend to take christianity as or right, going to church maybe giving our tithes this but christianity actually means living a life that uh, that glorifies the lord a life should glorify the lord a life should show that there is the light of uh, jesus christ in us doing away with deeds of darkness reflecting the light in the world uh, that we are placed in. that is how we become uh, we can live as children of light as god on his in prayer father in heaven we thank you and praise you most lord for your goodness and mercy your god and lives and thank you for once again showing us revealing to us master what your word uh, tells us god for the lord we I uh, pray that you will help us to walk in thy path so that your name be glorified in and through our lives. Yes master in all circumstances help us to know that your light is there with us. Uh even when we walk to the valley of the shadow of death yes lord we read psalms 23 even at that time it is your light that guides us a master help us to know that to god. Yes father lord we just commit ourselves in thy hands in Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right this is the time that we uh, are going to sing a few songs of praises and so we believe you in that and uh, then there will be other aspects when i have to leave right so i'll be uh, leaving uh, i'm going to delhi so i got a flight to catch right so uh, please do enjoy the worship service right thank you Let us continue to praise and worship the Lord. The first song that we'll sing is "Bind Us Together, Lord, Bind Us Together, Bind Us Together with Cords That Cannot Be Broken." And even as the song says, "There is only one God, there is only one King," and that is very much true. And that is what we profess. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together.
of life flowing out of me makes the lame to walk and blind to see even as we heard today the song it's based on that and <clears throat> even as it says ahead spring up a well within my soul spring up a well and make me whole we have the river of life flowing out of us and that should spring up so even as we sing this song let us understand this words and praise and worship the name of the lord i got a river of life flowing down
let us give the lord full control and let us tell that lord you lead my life shepherd of my soul i need full control where by having the intercessory prayer any prayer requests anybody has okay a gracious loving heavenly father thank you master lord for this beautiful time you have given us a lord in thy presence oh master father lord this is the opportunity which you have given us oh master yes lord in other parts of the world oh lord the your children don't have this freedom to worship you father lord thank you lord thank you master lord lord we pray for this world lord that this time who is going through so much of problems oh master russia and ukraine oh master they suffering because of the war the people of ukraine oh master lord your children they are suffering oh master because of so much of Uh, war no food children are suffering old people are suffering oh master have mercy master have mercy upon them lord the other parts of the world oh lord where there is uh, uh, floods and landslides and uh, uh, torrential rain oh master blizzards oh master lord we ask your grace and mercy oh lord the climatic changes oh master because of the global warming oh master father lord there is so much of uh, problems <coughs> sickness oh master lord Lord, this new virus which has come up, Lord H three and N three and two, Master, which is affecting the children and the aged and everyone, O oh Master. I pray that uh, you curb this virus, O oh Master. The fever, the pneumonia, which children are getting, people are dying, O oh Master. O oh Father, Lord, I pray that uh, uh, this virus may die down, O oh Master, Lord. Lord, just one word from your mouth, O oh Master, all the things will become good, O oh Master. but lord in spite of that we know that uh, your grace is sufficient for us oh master when we go through these trials as we read in psalms 23 today oh master lord even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death thy rod and thy staff will comfort me you will take us through oh master lord according to isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10 oh master lord yes master help us not to be afraid of all the circumstances which go uh, which are there around us oh master help us to focus our mind our thought our heart upon you oh lord upon jesus who is the author and the finisher of our life oh master father lord today especially we pray for those who are uh, ill oh master who are taking radiations who are been suffering from cancers lord we pray that you touch our brothers oh master our sisters oh lord who are taking radiations or chemo oh master give them grace give them double portion of your strength father lord we pray for our daughters oh lord who are conceived and where there is little bit of complications lord we pray that you may uh, bless the mother and the fetus oh master and that we may see miracles oh master father lord we pray for those of our, uh, our daughters oh lord who uh, wants to be conceived oh master lord father lord they have been crying and yearning to be mothers oh master that only you can do it oh master father lord our children who are seeking their life partners father lord only you can give a good wife or a good husband to them we just place this matter in, in thy throne of grace oh master father lord we pray for our families 
each and every one who is seated here and those who are not able to uh, come here and the others those who are known by your name we pray for each and every family you be the uh, center of our families Lord. not the guest but you be the the captain of our family Lord, the one who leads us because we know when you lead us through the power of the holy spirit help us to be sensitive to the uh, calling of the holy spirit oh lord yes master as we as we heard your word today how the blind man could recognize you oh master help us each and every one to recognize your voice to recognize to see you open the eyes open our heart oh master lord to see you to be obedient to you and to humble ourselves oh lord so that we can walk each day in the newness of life oh master father lord we pray lord for uh, those who are celebrating their birthdays lord uh, and their anniversaries bless them and lead them and may this year be a blessed one we specially pray for our pastor oh lord who is traveling to delhi oh master we ask your uh, travel mercies for him and all the classes which is going to take there oh lord in the kaleb institute i pray that the students and uh, he lord and other teachers may be blessed oh master you lead them oh lord thank you lord for this time and lord uh, we just place each one of us and the next week into your almighty hands in jesus name we pray amen uh we sing the last song uh, hymn number 494 from the song books 494 from the song book yes. I am thine O Lord I have heard thy voice I am thine O Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed. 
feet and say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Now may the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the Holy Spirit and of God the Father be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.